What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy and welcome back to the Savvy Show. And today we got another interesting one on surface level. It is called SCP-052 Time Traveling Train. And I'm excited about this one because this was recommended by one of the viewers named Lucas Eduardo. So if you're actually watching this, Lucas, hopefully you enjoy it. And yeah, hopefully I enjoy it as well too. This seems pretty cool. I love things I have to do with time. So let's see what we're going to get ourselves into. So with that all out the way, if you guys do enjoy my reactions, please remember to smash that like button. Also join the family too. We're pretty new, so love to have you around. We're pretty small right now, so more the merrier. And also remember the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think about this SCP that I'm going to be reacting to and what are some of your favorite ones you like me to react to in the future so yeah and I also will look at all the comments because you know just like this video this was a recommendation that I've implemented on the channel so I love your guys's feedback recommendations so keep it coming so with that all out the way let's get this show started alrighty SCP-052 time traveling train let's get it it's late on a Saturday night in New York City 11.55 p.m. to be exact. A man is running towards the subway station on 59th Street. He's just gotten off from work at the restaurant where he waits tables, and he's in a hurry to get home and spend some time with his girlfriend. Like we all. As he approaches the station, he notices something strange. Someone has placed a wooden barrier in front of the entrance. Hmm. The man has never seen something like this before, but he hasn't lived in Brooklyn very long. Everything about the station looks normal behind the barrier. That's a station? Oh my god, Loki look like reminds me of like a layout of a spaceship. Like from just looking at it from like right there, like <laughs> looks like they're in space right here. Like <laughs> I'm pointing with my finger. Looks like they're in space right here. But um that's probably just a nice sky. But um it just looked kind of goofy for a second. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm going crazy. Barrier. And he's in a hurry. He doesn't want to have to go several blocks to the next station, so he hops the barrier. What's the worst <laughs> that could happen? As the man walks onto the train platform. He starts to second guess his decision. Yeah. The platform is empty. And come to think of it, he hasn't seen anyone in the station at all. Maybe he did make a mistake. Maybe the station really is closed for repairs. I mean, he turns around. Let me pause this real quick. I don't really fault him that much going over the barrier because there was no caution sign. I mean, some people usually just put barriers just to put it there. And it's, you know, New York. So y you never know. So I won't doubt him that much for just like go over. Maybe I might do it if I'm in a rush, to be honest. Got to hang out with the girl, you know, like, come on now. <laughs> Nothing can't stop that. <laughs> but just as he does, he hears a train. Good. Everything is normal. He checks his watch. 11.57 p.m. on the dot. The train comes to a stop. That's where the time comes in, slide open. baby. It looks a little older than the trains he usually rides, but it appears to be in perfect shape. And it's going the direction of his home. So he steps on board. Just like the station and the platform, there's no one else on the train. Strange. But he's ridden nearly empty trains before, hmm. especially late at night. Though usually at this time on a Saturday, there's at That'll least a few sketchy. people on board. Yeah, Saturday? Just then, he hears something in the station. He turns to see someone running down the platform, crying out. Stop, stop, the man in the mass transit authority vest cries, dropping what looks to be his dinner on the platform as he runs. While the MTA worker Damn. is still several feet away, the doors snap shut and the train begins to move. Just going on some speculations before we get too deep in this. I'm assuming this train is going to take him to another time zone or another timeline within, you know, whatever dimension this train resides. That's probably why, you know, the dude was trying to stop him. Because he probably won't come back in like this timeline again. Who knows? But, you know, maybe if he does come back, it'll be in a different time. I'm assuming. The MTA worker cries out again to stop, but he knows there's no point. He watches as the train heads down the tracks and disappears into the darkness. Damn. With a sigh, he takes out a walkie-talkie and it squawks to life. We've lost another one, he says. <laughs> I'm Dr. Bob. Yo, okay. This... <laughs> Hella cash too. He said that hella casual. But if you if you're losing so many people, bro, why would you put a sign? Do not enter. Why do you just put some little barrier? Like a lot of people just go over that. Like put do not enter, you know, crazy time train downstairs. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. You're asking for it, but we'll we'll commence. And this is SCP-052, also known as the Time Traveling Train. 
SCP-052 appears to be a standard-looking Type R4 New York City subway train. Official city records state that the train was built in 1932 yeah. and decommissioned for scrap in 1975. Super old. Despite the fact that it should no longer exist, SCP-052 continues to appear on the Uptown AD track at the 59th Street and 8th Avenue station at exactly 11.57 p.m. every Saturday night. The train Damn. appears to be in perfect condition, just the same as when it was built over 80 years ago, and it is marked as an A-train. Each Saturday, the train arrives at exactly the same time, opens its doors to accept or discharge passengers for precisely five minutes, okay. then closes its doors and disappears until the next week. Where did the train come from? And where does it go in between the weekly appearances? Different times, different timelines, or different time zones. Well, I wouldn't say time zones, just different um, dimensions probably too. Because it's probably going to like each Saturday in each dimension. That'd be kind of cool if that's the case, but we obviously shall see. These are questions the SCP <clears throat> Foundation is trying to answer. But perhaps the most frightening aspect of SCP-052 is that once you get on the train, there's no guarantee of ever getting off. Sadly, <laughs> the majority oh, of subjects that have been observed boarding SCP-052 have not been heard from again. The rare few that have been recovered claim to have boarded the train on various dates, ranging from 1976 all the way to the year 2204, with the latter claiming he thought he was boarding a special 300th anniversary train. Thus far, none of the recovered passengers have reported any memories or knowledge of their time. So does that mean he's from a different timeline? I'm assuming it's alluding to it, but it was not confirmed yet. Or the train between entering and exiting. <clears throat> Any passengers spotted disembarking from SCP-052 are to be immediately brought to Site-21 for questioning to determine their origin and assess whether they pose any threat to the current time stream. Hmm. The Foundation has had great success administering Class A amnestics to passengers who arrived from the past and reintegrating them into society. Okay. So it is confirmed they were from the past or maybe the future sometimes. But um, I'm just going to um, throw this out there. I'm going to say it's safe. I, I feel like they're going to label this safe from what I've known about, you know, the liberalization of SCPs. It's not dangerous unless you board the train. The train could go there at 11.57 p.m. And then if no one goes on, it's just going to go about his business. It's like minding his own business. It's not like really an inter interacting with anyone else unless someone, you know, goes on the train. And even if someone goes on the train, the train is still not like really doing anything to that person. They're just riding the train and they're purposely doing that. So, I mean, I don't think it's dangerous. They just need to be smarter about it. Put a caution tape, caution sign or something next time. But any passenger who is identified as being from the future must be held indefinitely to prevent potential disruptions to this reality's time stream. That's smart. Order That's smart. 69-A1 from 05 council member 05-9. There are currently 20... Wait, smart but fucked up. I mean, just try to send them back to their own timeline, but I doubt they could do, do that. But like, <laughs> well, I mean, you just wind up in the past and you're from the future. You're just there indefinitely, miss your family and friends forever. Like, <laughs> oh my God. That's pretty heavy, bruh. Six recovered passengers being held at Site 21 who fit this description. And there are not yet any procedures in place that would allow for their safe release into modern society. Nor has there been any workable theories for how to return them to their original home time. Despite the protocols in place to prevent public access, some passengers from the present have still managed to accidentally board SCP-052. And subjects from other times continue to appear. Like the first Following two. interviews, it's been discovered that some of these subjects arrive from alternate timelines and realities. I called that. I totally called that. Alternate timelines and realities. I said dimensions and everything, but it's still the same thing. Yo. Okay, this is getting really dope. This raises the question of whether it is possible for SCP-052 to appear in other times and places, which may require the containment of additional locations. For sure possible. And reports of any suspicious activity involving unscheduled trains are being monitored and investigated around the world. Following its initial discovery, several tests were attempted in order to better understand the anomalous train and what may be happening when it is no longer visible. Yeah. The first test took place on May 31st, 2009. An agent was told to simply board the train. They did as requested and have yet to be recovered as of the present date. I'm assuming this is a, um, a D, a D soldier, which is, um, death row inmates. I'm hoping this is the case. 
because it didn't say is like well let me let me rewind actually <clears throat> longer visible the first test took place on may 31st 2009 an agent was told to simply or just an the agent they did as requested an actual agent okay they're tripping then they're dummy tripping why would you send a death row inmate why would you send an agent on the train and why would the age <laughs> asian why would the agent accept it like what the heck and have yet to be recovered as of the present date wow a second test took place a week later on june 6th this agent too was never recovered the reports indicate that he may have returned to our timeline in 1980 why is an agent at which point he was killed in a confrontation that has since been classified oh, God, a third bro. test was conducted the next week on june 13th once again the agent was told to board the train and did so this time though like, are they doing, like, layoffs or something? Like, this is an easier way to, like, you know, downsize? Like, what? why are you sending agents, man? I don't get it. You have death row inmates to use for every other SCP. Why is this one so special? Why you gotta send agents? Like, why do you have to send agents? You could literally just send a death row inmate just to sit there and tell you what happened. And most of the time, they're not coming back, so... <laughs> man, they're, they're really goofy for this. The agent returned. Just two weeks later, on June 27th, the agent stepped back off the train, with his hands appearing to have been surgically removed. A note had been placed in his pocket that had the simple message, Send no more, written on it. The agent claims not to remember any of his experiences Yo. on the train over the two weeks he was gone, or what may have happened Are they to his hands. they would compensate him for his hands? Following this third test, O5 Command issued orders stopping the use of Foundation agents as passengers on SCP-052. No shit! D-Class, due to their disposable nature... <laughs> Yo, I can't make this up, bro. Y'all should have did this from the rip. Y'all should have did this from Jump Street. Why are you now just sending them there? Man, I feel sorry for the D-classes, but, like, come on. And... <laughs> this is SBC. Man, they're slacking on this one. They're, they're obviously slacking. It must be, like, some time of the month or something. As convicted felons and death row inmates were considered as potential replacements for the agents in the exploration of SCP-052, but the risk of releasing them into the past or the future was determined to be too great. Other than the agent who knowingly boarded the... Okay. Okay. They got a good reason. They, they got a good reason there. They, they really do. Because I didn't think about, you know, if they actually, you know... Stumble along in the past or present, they could, like, you know, mess things up. I figured they wouldn't even know what to do, to be honest. But they got a point. They got a point. Train. Several other notable passengers have been recovered. <clears throat> One case involved the recovery of a woman who entered the train on July 14th, 2012, but was recovered four years earlier on March 8th, 2008. She entered the train while on her way home from the theater and was surprised to learn she traveled four years into the past. Because another version of her existed at the time she was recovered, oh, shit. she was held to prevent unwanted temporal effects. Another subject Damn. was recovered in 2008 who claimed to be from the year 1976. Although there was nothing physically wrong with him and no risk of time stream disruptions, Foundation psychiatrists recommended that he be held indefinitely as 32 years was believed to be too long a period of time to successfully reintegrate into society. Bro. Perhaps the most interesting recovery was of a man claiming to be a level four supervisor from the SCP Federation who boarded the train in December of 2124. He said that he had been administered a class A amnestic prior to boarding and remembered nothing until his recovery in 2010. While the agent can clearly never be released into society, For real? Five Command has approved the sharing of classified information about various anomalies in the hopes that he can provide additional information on possible containment procedures. Because SCP-052 has so far proven impossible to stop exactly. or remove from the New York City subway system, it has been classified Safe. as Euclid. Euclid? But its predictable nature means that the Foundation is usually able to prevent the public from encountering it. The 59th Street ABCD station is closed to the public between 11 p.m. on Saturday night. Okay, put some caution tape, guys. Do some more than just that little stare because you guys still get you guys are still losing more people. That's obviously enough. I don't. That's not enough. And why is it not safe? I can understand it's Euclid. That's. I can see why it's that, but like, I feel like it'll be leaning more towards safe. Because you know when the train is coming. You guys got the time. You guys got the station. And it comes every Saturday. 
block it off every single Saturday. And like, I don't know how that sh it should be safe. I know you guys don't have that much information on it, but like, I don't think you even need that. Like the information that you have already should be enough for it to be classified as safe. In just my own opinion, mind you guys. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine with Euclid, but I always still lean towards safe. You just can't, you just can't be stupid. Like why are you, why are you just putting that there? Like you need, you need more than just a little barrier. And 1 a.m. on Sunday morning. <clears throat> under the pretext of track maintenance. Any passengers seen leaving SCP-052 must be taken to Site-21 for debriefing and processing, and members of the public who simply see SCP-052 may be released after the administration of a Class B amnestic. Wow. As for what happens to most of the passengers who board SCP-052 and are never seen from again, <laughs> we simply don't know. Dang. Now go and watch another entry. Yo, okay, that was that was that was a good one. I love time travel, so that was really dope. But it was just ridiculous, just the 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 way they're handling this SCP. I liked it a lot. It was just more comedic than anything else. Like they sent agents after agents after agents, knowing exactly what's going to transpire most of the time on average, and they still sent a lot of them. And just you know what they prevent, what they use to prevent, you know. People going was not enough, obviously, but it was still a good one to watch. I still had a great time. So if you guys enjoyed this reaction, please let me know by smashing that like button. And also remember, the original link to the video is in the description below. Feel free to check it out if you would like. And remember, in the comments section below, let me know in the comments what's your guys' favorite SCP and what did you guys think about this SCP? Like, were you guys like blown as well when you found out like they kept on sending agents and everything? Like, yo. Like, yo, the, the, that was hilarious for me. But um, let me know in the comment section below. Remember, smash the sub button as well, too, and join the family. We're pretty small right now, so we'd love to have you. Let's make this family as big as we can get it. So with that being said, that concludes the show, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Savvy, signing out.